Now, let us revisit the diagram with respect to equilibrium under monopoly. And you know how much output will be produced by the monopolist, what will be the price charged by the monopolist, and how much will be the marginal cost of production. And, and so what you find under monopoly is price charged by the monopolist is greater than marginal cost of production. And under perfect competition, what we had found is price charged by a firm under perfect competition equals marginal cost of production. And so I have written this down here. And so as far as monopoly goes, a monopolist charges a price greater than marginal cost of production. And relative to perfect competition, in a way, consumers are being overcharged when we have monopoly-like situation relative to, say, perfect competition. And how does a monopolist accomplish this? By restricting output, because the output produced by the monopolist is lower than that under perfect competition. And by restricting output, the monopolist can charge a price greater than marginal cost of production. So if the monopolist charges a price greater than marginal cost of production, we think the monopolist is overcharging the customers. If, on the other hand, the price charged by a monopolist is less than marginal cost of production, we call this dumping. And dumping is essentially an activity done to keep competition out of the market. So what the monopolist will do is charge a price lower than what it costs to produce it, or price charged by the monopolist will be lower than the marginal cost of production. Now, the extent to which a monopolist overcharges the customers, or in other words, price is greater than marginal cost, the difference between these two in a way reflects the monopoly power of the single seller. Now, you will remember that this is an expression we found when we looked at the relationship between marginal revenue and price. And we know in equilibrium, marginal revenue equals marginal cost. And so we can replace MR with MC. And this is what I have done here. And here what I have done is I've just opened the parentheses and this is what we have. So this equals marginal cost. And we just bring marginal cost to one side and take P divided by price elasticity of demand to the other side. And this is what we will get. Now what we do is we divide throughout by price. And this is the final expression we get. Now this part which in a way measures the difference between price and marginal cost is referred to as index of monopoly power. And I'll just write MP. And this is due to an economist by the name of Abba P. Lerner. And hence, this is called Lerner's index of monopoly power. And what is this equal to? Negative 1 divided by price elasticity of demand or monopoly power is inversely related to price elasticity of demand. Here we have Lerner's index of monopoly power, and we know this is inversely related to the absolute value of price elasticity of demand. Now, if you have inelastic demand relative to elastic demand, what you'll find is monopoly power will be greater when you have inelastic demand relative to when you have elastic demand. And so when you have higher monopoly power, that simply means the difference between price and marginal cost must be larger, or you can charge a higher price to a customer with lower elasticity of demand. So a monopolist will charge a higher price to a customer with lower elasticity of demand and a lower price to a customer with higher elasticity of demand. And what does this mean? For example, you're looking at this one. And lower elasticity of demand simply means you are more dependent on this product. And when you are more dependent on a particular product, chances are 
the monopolist can charge you a higher price. Now let us look at one of the ways a monopolist can make more profits or exploit his or her monopoly power and that is called price discrimination. By price discrimination we mean the act of charging a different price to different consumers or different sets of consumers. If you do that the situation is called price discrimination and the purpose is for the monopolist to make more and more profits. Now what are the conditions required for price discrimination? The first being the market can be divided into parts or is segmentable. And number two, something we have learned through index of monopoly power is different consumers or different sets of consumers have different price elasticity of demand. The third condition required is reselling is not possible in the sense the person who receives this good at a lower price cannot sell it to a customer who would pay a higher price. So these are the three conditions required for price discrimination to be effective. Price discrimination is distinguished in terms of degree or the effectiveness with which it is followed. Now consider the following. So we have this demand curve for this particular product that is being sold by a monopolist. And for this product, this monopolist is somehow able to figure out that the first customer is willing to pay $5 for this product. The second customer is willing to pay $4 for this product. And the third customer is willing to pay $3 for its product. Now, if the monopolist wanted to sell all three units and charge a uniform price or the same price to different customers, the max price he could charge is $3. And at $3, he would be able to get to all three customers. So how much money would he make when he sells three units at $3 of uniform price? It will be $9. Now compare that situation to price discrimination of first degree. What he does is he charges a price to each customer based on his or her willingness to pay. The first customer is willing to pay five bucks for it. So from the first customer, the monopolist receives five dollars. For the same product, from the second customer, the monopolist receives four dollars. And from the third customer, the monopolist receives three dollars or in total what this person is able to get is twelve dollars and compare this twelve dollars to nine dollars that the monopolist would make if he charged a uniform price of three dollars per unit. Now the key thing here for the monopolist or the seller is that he or she should be able to determine what is the willingness to pay for each of the customers? And they could figure out by the way people dress up, the way they talk, and so on. So whenever you are on a one-on-one -on -one situation and you talk to the seller and try to negotiate a price, and what the seller will try to ascertain is how much is the max you can pay and just remember this, if you become too comfortable and start talking a lot, chances are it will be fairly easy for the seller to determine what is the max you are willing to pay. If, on the other hand, you are quiet, it's very hard for the seller to figure out how much you are willing to say. And so, so this is what sellers will try to do. They'll try to ascertain what is the max you are willing to pay and just set a price which will work with you. And so this is price discrimination of first degree and this is how monopolist makes more. Now let us consider price discrimination of second degree and this is the act of charging different price for different units sold. For example, if you buy say 100 units, up to 100 units of output sold by the monopolist, probably you'll pay an average unit price of $5 per unit. But if you buy anything greater than 100 units, say up to 200 units, you pay an average unit price of $4 per unit. 
and this situation is referred to as price discrimination of second degree. So here again, as you can see, the monopolist will make more profits. And, and this is a phenomena you may find at JCPenney, Walmart, and other stores. And what they tell you is the more you buy, the more you save. And this is what they mean when they come up with slogans like that one. Then you have price discrimination of third degree. Suppose there is a manufacturer located in Japan. And what this large manufacturer does is he divides the world market into different parts and charges a different price to these different markets. So this is called pricing according to the market. And the price, you know, will depend on price elasticity of demand. So he may divide the world into Europe, US, Asia, Latin America, and so that, and charge different prices to each of these markets. And this is referred to as price discrimination of third degree, and that is the act of charging a different price to different groups of customers, price discrimination of third. Now let us look at another way a monopolist can make more money, and this is called bundling. By bundling, we mean is an act of selling two or more products as a package. For example, when you go to buy a toothpaste, you may get a toothbrush along with that one. And for a situation like this, we require two conditions. Number one, consumers have demand which is for heterog heterogeneous products. So you have demand for toothpaste as well as toothbrush. And number two is price discrimination is not possible. So these two conditions are required for bundling to be effective. Now look at the following example. There are two movies and there are two theaters and each of these movie theaters have a demand for movie one and movie two. Theater A is willing to pay $12,000 for movie one and $3,000 for movie two. Theater B is willing to pay a maximum price of $10,000 for movie one and $4,000 for movie two. Now suppose this seller who is selling both these movies decides to sell them separately. What is the max price this seller could charge for movie one? And it wants both these theaters to buy this movie. So the max price he would be able to charge is $10,000 for movie one and $3,000 for movie two. Or in other words, by selling these movies to the theaters, the seller will receive $26,000 of revenue. Now, compare that to the following situation. Suppose the seller decides to sell movie one and movie two together. What is the max price that theater A is willing to pay? It is $15,000. How do I know that? $12,000 plus $3,000. And how much is the second or theater B willing to pay for this? It is $14,000. Now, if the seller decides to sell this as a package, he can charge a price of $14,000 to each of the theaters. And what this person will receive is $28,000. And and that is greater than $26,000. And that means if he sells it as a package, the seller will make more money. He may not charge $28,000. Maybe he'll give them a $500 discount for sell, buying both movies together. And still, the monopolist will make more money. So this completes our discussion of monopoly. Thank you for your time.